Canada is a huge country. As many of you know, it's the second biggest in the world, but with a population of close to 39 million people, it's still a very sparsely populated country. But one region in Canada seems to have it, well, let's just say tougher. Known as the Maritimes, the eastern part of Canada is one of the least populated and lowest income regions in the country. Now you may wonder why or how this even happened. When we look down south, we see the complete contrary where the US's most eastern parts are usually the highest income ones and are pretty populated. So without further ado, let's look into Canada's eastern region's history and attempt to figure out why it's lagging behind the rest of the country. Make sure you're subscribed and let's get right into it. Now, while generally Eastern Canada refers to anything south of Manitoba, I really just want us to focus on the Maritimes. Also, as Quebec and Ontario are the largest provinces, well, this video just doesn't apply to them. Now, Halifax is the capital of Nova Scotia. It's also the largest city in the Maritimes, with 400,000 residents. Yes, you heard that right, it doesn't even cross half a million. The next largest city we have to decrease to 200,000. You see, this is St. John's in Newfoundland and Labrador. None of the maritime provinces have a population of over 1 million people. Even if the four provinces were miraculously combined, they would only have 2.4 million inhabitants. This region is not only limited in its population, but also has a lethargic economy. However, this was not always the case. While the Maritimes industry's economic underperformance has long existed, it was not always apparent. The mid-19th century, especially the 1850s and 1860s, has long been regarded as a golden age in the Maritimes. The region had one of the most extensive industrial sectors in British North America, as well as a significant international shipping business, and growth was rapid. So what exactly happened? Historian, economists, and even geographers are in sharp disagreement about what caused the economic downturn in the Maritimes. The opposing perspectives can be broadly classified into two subgroups. The first is the others, who maintain that unavoidable technological and geographical circumstances caused the collapse, and we have structuralists, who blame poor government decisions. The exact moment the Maritimes fell behind the rest of Canada is impossible to determine. The date is dated rather early, at least in Nova Scotia, according to a historian named Chris Inwood, who notes clear signs that the Maritimes' golden age of the middle of the 19th century ended by 1970, before Confederation or the national policy could have had a significant impact. However, other historians believe the date is more likely to be 1885. But one thing is CERN. One of the biggest changes during this time was the revolution in transportation, which most certainly had an effect. In the 1870s, the Intercolonial Railway broke through a long-standing trade barrier to connect the maritime region with central Canada. This placed maritime producers squarely against central Canadian companies for the first time. The tariff policy of the federal government caused a major shift in maritime trading patterns, with the emphasis shifting from trading with the Caribbean, Britain, and New England to trading with the Canadian interior. You see, the era of wooden sailing ships was coming to an end, and with the establishment of railroads in the area, bigger and quicker steel steamships took their place. The shift was detrimental to the shipbuilding sector, which had traditionally been the center of the maritimes. Additionally, the larger ships were more inclined to sail to places like New York and Montreal rather than stop at smaller population centers like St. John and Halifax. The debate about the role of politics in the beginning of the region's downfall is even more contentious than that of concern of technology. As you can see, early confederation policies were shaped by interest in central Canada and represented the requirements of that area. The maritime economy became relatively weaker as a result of the unification of the Canadian market and the construction of railroads. There have been claims that central Canada's influence over policy, which exploited the national structure for its personal benefit, was the reason behind the poverty in the maritimes. This was the main tenet of the 1920s maritime rights movement, which called for increased municipal financial authority. And you see, the maritimes have undergone significant change during the course of the 20th century, in part due to national and international economic trends as well as government action. 
Despite the region not experiencing economic growth on the same magnitude as other sections of the country, the maritime subregions have grown over time to take use of various resources and specialties. In addition to being a hub for shipbuilding and the timber trade, St. John also serves as a hub for certain industries and oil refining today. Edmondson, Campbellton, Dalhousie, Bathurst, and Miramachi are in the northern New Brunswick, and they're mostly known for their pulp and paper sector, along with a little amount of mining activities. Originally a railroad hub, Moncton is now primarily a multimodal transportation hub with related manufacturing and retail business. Peninsula Nova Scotia has been dominated by the Halifax metropolitan area in terms of retail and service. However, the province industries were dispersed throughout the industrial Cape Breton and Pictou counties, the mixed farming regions of the North Shore and Annapolis Valley, and the fishing regions of the South Shore and Eastern Shore. The main industries in Prince Edward Island are farming, fishing, and tourism. And now the reason the coastal regions aren't as crowded as the central regions may be, well, it might be because despite these industries' growth, they're just not as profitable for the province as, for example, the oil industry is for Alberta. As a result, fewer people are naturally needed in the province, and when government services become more scarce, some individuals just choose to relocate. Also, lower economic opportunities might just push people out of the province. I hope you were able to understand with these factors then why Canada is lagging behind the rest of Canada. It's hard to grow a population without jobs and it's hard to create a good economy when it's just not diversified and it's based primarily on resources. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe and let me know what else you'd like to see next. Thank you for watching.